Hello, 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 everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art, where I love helping create joy through art and creativity. How's that? Does that sound a little better? What do you think? So, hello, everyone. I'll give you guys a few minutes to hop on. I have a totally different screen for my live. I don't know why. That is so bizarre. Okay, I'm going to pop a comment in here so I know when it moves, I'm getting comments. And then, um, hello, so this is what we are painting tonight. Welcome to April's PIY, Paint It Yourself. So this is what we'll be painting. I have out an 11 by 14 canvas. I have out my tracer. I have some graphite paper. And then I'll make paints and brushes and whatever, a little cup of water. So how is everyone? Let me um, make some room here. And uh, we will get started. Hello, hello, hello. So I printed out my tracer and taped it together. Um, you know, not everyone has access to a printer. I can't help that. This is probably something you could. Um, hey, Deb, welcome, Deb, newbie. Hi, Melanie, you made it home. Woohoo. Deb, here from Florida for the first time. I am painting from New York. Nice to see you. Um, I use um, graphite paper, and this is well-used graphite paper. You can see I've used it. Oh, can't even begin to count how many times I've used it. It is inexpensive. You can get a pack with a few sheets of it, and I use it over and over and over again. I have my tracer. And like I said, this is about the journey. It's not necessarily about the end product, although I know you guys are like, oh, my God, that's so cute. I have to paint that, and it really is. It's, it's really cute. And we have so much going on here. The ladybug, the bumblebee. I mean, I can teach a class on bumblebees all by themselves. They'd be a little different, but yes. You got some easy daisies in there. And I, I use the word easy lightly because I don't want you guys, if you're a little challenged, to feel bad because I said they were easy. But in the whole scheme of things and in the flower world, daisies are one of the easier flowers to paint. And then we have our cute little gnome. So... Um, I'm going to get out my paints. I'm going to turn my camera around. I will try to follow the chat. This, if you're new to me, this recording stays in the group. Once um, I'm done tonight or tomorrow, it gets moved to guides. So if you look over and you can find the guides section, it's usually on the left of the um, Facebook pages. You will see this probably, and I should have looked. There's probably about, I'm trying to line this up because it doesn't fit exactly. There's probably about 18 or 19 guides in there, maybe even 20, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to do that. That's good. You will notice um, I tend to be a little laid back. I used to be very stringent, very, very... Um, colors, strokes, get the ruler. I've gotten a little bit um, loosey-goosey in that. So um, don't fret. Take a deep breath and we will, we, will, we will do it. We will get there. So I put my tracer on here like a hinge. You can use one piece of tape, two pieces of tape, whatever. Now I'm going to get my graphite paper and I'm just going to slide it under here. Make sure my um, tracer didn't move too much and we're good. Then you can use a stylus, you can use a pen, you can use a pencil, you can use the back of the brush, whatever you want. And over here, my branch doesn't go all the way to the end, so I'm just gonna pretend like it does and come over here and meet up with the line. And I'm gonna start tracing in my branch. Now we don't have to trace in every single little detail and every little line and every little um, nuance because you will see I'm going to put this I'm just doing one little line down for the rope you will see you know as you paint as you tweak stuff you might get to a part where you had something traced in there and another part of your art is over that or interfering with that and it's not gonna work for you, and that's fine. It happens, right? It happens, so we're not gonna worry about that. 
So I've done the branch, I've done both the ropes, and now I did the swing, and now I'm gonna start working on my gnome. And when I do the gnome, he has two lines for his shoes. I'm just doing the outside line just to get the basic shape of his shoes in there. Okay, and I'll do his arms. And then we'll go to the beard. And again, the beard does not have to be exact. Sometimes I just skip it. As long as it's triangular, your strokes will not follow the beard exactly like it is. So don't worry. Those just more to show you that when you do your brush strokes, you want an uneven edge. You're not going to have a straight edge there because we want his beard to look a little wispy like there's hairs boinging out all over. So now moving up here to the hat. Get the little tip of the hat. Come down. I did the nose. What I am going to do, I'm going to put in the centers of the flowers. Okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about the B. Actually, you know what? You might worry about the B. So let's just do the B. But I'm just going to do the B's body. I'm not doing the B's wings. Don't worry about the B's wings. And then up here we can do the basic shape of the ladybug's body. But that's it. If you want to, you can do your leaves. I'm doing them a little bit smaller. And I'll explain why. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, I'm going to do the flower, too, on the hat. Then I'm going to hold my hand here, and I'm going to peek up, and I'm going to make sure I got everything. And that's basically all I did. Oh, I didn't put the branches in. See that? So I'm going to put one branch in and one branch in, but that's it. Okay. I'm going to lift up again just to make sure again. Got the centers of the flowers and we are good to go okay take off the tape and take off my graphite paper and toss it over there okay so now I have the basic drawn out um, outline sketch tracer okay I have out ooh, I should I should have gotten a clean plate but I did not so I'm going to show you guys. So we're using um, a dark green, a light green. Oops. And this could be any light green. In this case, I'm using, um, what is it, sea glass. But I also, oh, here's my dark green. But I also have um, Hauser Light. I have Matcha. I have a few different light greens. I have some tan, fawn. I have a aqua blue, white, black, brown red and yellow and these are all deco art colors i get them in the 16 ounce can so i put them in these um condiment things so they're easy to handle and squeeze out but those are all the colors we're going to need unless of course you want to put a different color hat or a different color um, outfit on him or whatever that is totally up to you so i have put out on my dirty plate which i should get a new plate and i probably will some white and some of my light green and it doesn't really matter what light green you have um, because my light green, because of computers and screens and stuff, is going to look different than your light green anyway. So even if we were using the same exact color, once you see it on the screen, it looks totally different anyway. So, so again, we will get started. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush. And I'm going to come over here on my light green. And when I load my brush, I want to put a little bit of pressure on it. I want the, um, the bristles to flare out. This way we get a nice amount of paint up into our brush. Okay? And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to dip in some white. Now this background is just a series of vertical stripes. So I'm taking my brush that has the green on it and the white 
and I'm just going, oh, you can't hardly see that. There we go, up and down. So I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this light green. I'm gonna pick up some white. I have them both on my brush and I'm just adding these in and they're overlapping one another. So it blends, you wanna see green, you wanna see white, but you wanna see the differences. You wanna see a little bit of stripe in there too. You don't want your colors to just become like one super light green. So we don't want to over mix. So I always pick up green, I always pick up white, and I come back in here, and I'm gonna be able to see my ladybug. So I went right over my ladybug. And the same thing with my leaves. I can see my leaves. You can probably see your leaves through yours as well. And I can see my leaves. And then I'm just going up and down, up and down, up and down. And we want to see all those different colors in there. Now since I ended here, I'm going to continue there. So I'm going to pick up some light green and pick up white. See how every time I go, I have green and white on my brush? I'm just going to come in here. And now I'm going to start adding in these long strokes because we want to fill up the entire background with the variation of this white and green. I'm using about a half inch wide um, flat brush. I could be using a bigger brush, but I tend to, I'm watching tonight and hope to paint it tomorrow. That's awesome, Deb. Well, like I said, it will be here for you as are others. Um, and then Deb, if you run into any issues, just hit me up and I'd be happy to help. Anyway, um, I tend to paint a little quickly. I really have to control myself and not paint quickly in these classes. And I sometimes I do a good job, sometimes I don't, I'm very sorry. I get caught up in the art and I'm very sorry. But I could be using a bigger brush for this and that is one reason why I'm not. So if you have a bigger brush, a three quarter inch brush, a one inch brush for the background, that would be okay because um, we would probably be at the same pace anyway. And I'm just literally, and if you, you can't really see me, but I'm not going like this. I'm moving my whole arm up and down from the shoulder. All right, I'm gonna work my way around the swing a little bit. And it doesn't matter, you guys, if you get some on the branch, if you get some on the swing, if you go out of the lines, you know, this isn't, this isn't nursery school, kindergarten, we're like, oh, you gotta stay in the lines. Nope, nope, nope. This is acrylic paint. If you get some on the swing, if you get some on the gnome, if you get some on the branch, it doesn't matter because we do these things in order for a reason. And when we go back, that's how we go back and fix it. Okay, so I've done all that side. I'm gonna keep working this way and I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna do this. And I'm going up. And again, even though this is a shorter stroke, I'm not doing this with my wrist. I'm moving my whole arm up and down. I'm moving it from the shoulder. My elbow is kind of like locked. And it really has to do with like if you have enough place, space to do this too. You know, so a lot of us paint or work in our kitchen tables. You know, I understand it's not easy, but you get a different stroke when you're moving from your shoulder and then when you're doing this. There'll be times when we're gonna flick, but this is not one of them. So now I'm coming over here. I'm just gonna fill in a little bit under the branch and across the top of his hat, okay? And la di da, we're just going to keep in working on filling up our entire background. Now, one thing for you, Deb Dalton, since you're going to paint it tomorrow, if you're watching me on the replay, um, I should have said this at the beginning, but I will tell you now, this is one of those paintings that if you were to paint the background first and then go back and trace it on, it would work just as well. So if you didn't want to be bothered 
going around the gnome and this background is light enough that when you go back with all the gnome colors, it'll totally cover your acrylic paint. So if you're watching this on the replay and you're like, why is she doing that? It is totally fine if you um, do your background first and then come in once it's dried, trace on your gnome, and then get to painting. Okay, this is where it gets a little tricky now. Now we wanna get in all these grooves, and this is exactly why I was just saying, if you wanted to do it first, you can. Because I'm gonna work on getting my brush in all these grooves. Don't worry, it's okay if we get out of the line, but we wanna be basically around his body, around his hat, around his arms and then keeping our strokes when we're in all these nook and, nooks and crannies as vertical as possible. Right here, I went over that part of the flower. That's okay, it doesn't matter. And a lot of times I'll paint with people, but you can go over the flower, you can go over his nose, and people will still try and go around. And really, if I say it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. So it's a-okay, you guys. If I feel strongly about something, I'll let you know. Okay, I just wanna fill in here on the top. I do have to use a few horizontal strokes to get close to my hat and get it filled in, but then I'm going back in and making sure all my vertical strokes are horizontal. I mean, over, oh, all, yeah, all my vertical strokes are vertical. That didn't make any sense, right? silly okay we just want to get a little bit closer to him here sometimes these canvases have such deep divots oh I have a um I still have a home phone and apparently CVS is leaving a message so I had it unplugged. I'm like, oh, who's going to call here? So I moved it and plugged it in. Whatever. Anyway, okay. So we have our background done. Okay. Give you a couple minutes, those of you who are painting with me, to get a little bit caught up on the background. Okay. And I'm going to wash my brush. When I um, wash and dry my brush, I always like to give it a squeeze in the paper towel as opposed to just wiping it on the paper towel on the on the desk like this. I feel like I get more water out when I give it a little bit of a squeeze. Just my habit. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. So then I have out some brown and a tiny bit of black. And then obviously I have my white out because I was dipping in that before. I'm going to stick with this brush for now. I'm still using my half inch flat brush. I'm going to pick up some of this um, brown. And I'm going to, first I'm going to use it on the chisel edge. And I'm going to trace the outside of my branch. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to trace my branch. And the branch does not have to be perfect. It's a branch. They're a little wonky. If yours gets a little fatter, gets a little skinnier, gets a little bit more bumpy, totally, totally okay. And then I'm just coming in here and I'm going I'm using little tiny strokes back and forth, overlapping a little bit, and just filling in the whole thing. Working my way across. Okay, pick up a little bit of white, just a little bit, tiny bit on the corner, and then come back in here and just add in a little bit of that white, just to give it a little bit of some variation. 
So I have the brown. I'm gonna put a little, just the corner, just a little bitty corner right there and come back in here and fill in my branch. I'm gonna take the brown again and we'll come over here. So now we're gonna add two little branches coming off our branch. We do that, we stand up on the chisel edge, we come down the branch a little bit and then we veer off at an angle and we just make a branch. Okay, get some brown paint. I'm gonna do the same thing. You don't wanna come right here on the edge. You don't wanna make a hard turn and make it like a sharp L. You wanna come back, you wanna stand your brush up on the branch already. You wanna start moving down the branch, overlapping what you already painted, and then kind of fork off and make another branch. Now it doesn't matter what the end of your branches look like because we are going to add leaves. So that's our branch. I'm gonna pick up a smaller brush, which I could have done to begin with because um, we're gonna fill in his, we're still working with the brown. I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna fill in his arms and his legs. If you want to make your gnome's clothes a different color, totally up to you, but now would be the time to paint in his clothes. Okay, so we have one arm. This one's a little more in there, so it's not as tall or long, I guess long. I'm gonna put that one there. I'm gonna come down here, and we're gonna fill in his pants. Don't worry about the edge of your beard. Right now we're worrying about the pants. We don't have to worry about the edge of his beard and I'll show you why. So it's not like I'm following that um, line that we had for his beard that was all jagged. Nope, we just want to get his pants in here, base coated and filled in. Now we want our swing to be much lighter. So now I'm gonna pick up quite a bit of white on this same brush and come over here by the pile and make up a light brown. Now if you have your tan out, you can use your tan for this. We're gonna pick up some tan and put it on here too. But right now I'm just making a little bit and I'm painting in the swing. I'm going to turn my art. I often do turn my art. I'm going to get a little bit more white. I have to make a little bit more tan over here. And your tan, this is, this swing is wood. So if you make more tan and it doesn't match, that's totally okay, it's wood, it doesn't have to be exact. You want variations in the color. You want it to be a little bit darker in areas, a little bit lighter in areas. That's the front of my swing. And I'm gonna do these, the side parts where he's sitting. I know this is a little space, but if you can make the strokes on these little spaces in here go horizontally with the grain of the wood, it makes a difference. But I know we're beginners and that might be a little hard for you. So if you can't, just get it filled in and that's fine too. Outline in the edge. And I'm gonna come in here with little tiny strokes I'm just using like the tip of the brush because there's not a lot of room in here. And I'm going back and forth just to fill in. Now our paintings will go through stages where they'll look not very good. 
until they start to actually look good, okay? And that's okay. I want the front of my swing here to be a little darker. So now I picked up totally brown paint and I'm just going over the front of the swing. I'll fix this line here. Okay. Okay. Let me wash my brush. So don't forget, you guys, um, this will be available on the replay. I move everything into the guides. There are other guides in there to the left on your page. Lots going on. Um, all the guides have the video, the tracer, and the supply list. So let me show you guys what we have so far. Okay, so we did the background with a light green and white mix. Totally vertical lines, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then um, we got some brown and we painted in our tree branch, his clothes, and then we lightened that up a little bit and painted in the bottom of the swing. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. Oh, thanks, Deb. Um, I will try and answer. If I miss them, I do come back. I promise I come back and answer them. So um, don't worry about that. Okay, I'm gonna stick with this brush. If you have gray, that's fine. I'm gonna pull out a little bit of my white and put it over here. And then I'm going to take the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of black. I mean, a little bit of black goes a really long way. I mean, that barely looks like an ant. A little bigger than the head of a pin. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna mix it into my white. And I pull out my white to the side. So it's hard to see. I still have fresh white here. I have some green white there, but I'm making a light gray. Okay. And now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start in on his beard. And this is why I said it didn't matter if when you did the sleeves, see that there? Because now we're gonna fix all that. Where's my gray? Over here. Now we're gonna fix it with our gray. And we're just base coating in his beard, okay? And when we base coat in the beard, we don't care. See how I'm pulling it over? I'm pulling it a little bit over his pant leg. That's why if we messed up on our pant leg, need a little bit more, it wasn't gonna matter because that's why I do these things in stages because the next step can fix or enhance the previous step if need be. So I'm gonna come around here and again, his beard can just squeeze out a little bit. You know, he's a gnome, he doesn't really, have beard maintenance. He's got the hairs blinging out all over. And I'm just loosely pulling down. There. We don't want a harsh line there overlapping over his pants. And that's why I said when you traced your beard on, it didn't matter. And that's why I said when we did his pants and his shirt, it wasn't going to matter either because we're gonna fix it with our next step, okay? So now, that's good enough for me. Because we're that's just our first, this is just our base coat of our beard. So that's fine. I'm not gonna worry about spots missing. That's all for now. I'm gonna wash my brush. Okay. Now I am, I'm going to change plates because that plate that I use over and over again, it was bugging me and I feel like it might be a little confusing to you guys. I'm going to put out a little bit of my, um, this is peacock, um, peacock blue I think, 
a deco art color peacock blue you can use aqua you can use teal you can use red you can use whatever color you want okay so I'm gonna still using this flat brush it's about a quarter inch wide and I'm gonna start in doing the hat so we want to go over his nose and fill in our hat. So did you guys, I don't know who was a fan or not, but did you guys hear that Harry Belafonte died? I don't know if you saw on my page, but big, big fan, big fan of Harry Belafonte right here. I don't know if you guys would think that's weird or not, but I was. My mom took me to see him when I was 10 years old for my 10th birthday. The crazy thing about that was, before that, I was playing at a friend's house on her tire swing and nearly lost a finger and had to go to the emergency room. And I was so upset because I thought I was going to miss Harry Belafonte. And my mom pulled it off. We ended up going in one direction to the emergency room, getting me stitched up, driving back the other way to get home, get changed, grab some Chinese food for dinner, and then drive an hour to where the Harry Belafonte concert was. And it was awesome. I was 10, but I have pretty vivid memories. You know, we do, it's weird what we remember and we don't remember, but it was amazing. And it was a very, very little local theater around here. I've seen quite a few shows there a little bit, but um, it was so good. And I don't know, like I am a woman of a certain age. I don't know if you guys remember, but he did a few comedies back in the day with, um, Sidney Poitier and quite the musician yeah he did some acting too he did a couple of comedies with Sidney Poitier and um what's his name Cosby guy oh Bill Cosby duh in the 70s so okay now I have my hat while my hat is wet I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white and I'm gonna start blending in some white. And when I, I'm using my dirty brush, I'm just picking up a little bit of white on the corner and I'm blending it in. And when I blend it in, I want to make a little bit of an arc. We don't wanna go straight across. This kind of gives us the illusion that our hat is rounded. So I pick a little bit of white up on the corner on my dirty brush that's got the aqua in it or whatever color you did your hat. And I just give the illusion by, isn't this, this is one of my favorite colors. I have a little bit of a lighter one, it's called patina, but yeah, I love this color. And really I'm just picking up a little bit, a little bit on the corner and coming in here and lightening up part of the hat okay and there we have it okay so what do you guys think so far isn't it adorable so cute so cute let me turn you guys around. So, I have a glare. My daughter is coming. So my daughter is um, a really talented video editor. She um, has worked for two news companies and now she works for an online streaming company. So she's coming, she's going to be in between apartments and she's gonna be home for about a month. She's moving from Atlanta to Nashville. So while she's home, 
I want to get um, her in here on my lights and I need to get my lights set up right because I have such a glare here especially when the canvas is white once I start painting and filling it in it's better but when I first start out and it's important when you first start out because you want people to say oh I can see and stay and follow along but really the beginning with the tracing and the background stuff, it's, it's, well, it's all important, but it's very important. So I need to do something with my lights and hopefully she will be here and we'll be able to work it out. But so that's why I'll hold it up or move it around because I want you guys to get the best experience possible out of this. So we've done our background, a mixture of the light green, mint green, light green, forest, um, like fresh grass, sage, something light green and white in vertical lines. Then we went in and we did the brown and lightened it up with a little bit of white. And we filled in the brown for his hands and his feet and the swing. And then we base coated in the beard. Okay. I'm gonna put out some fresh white on my clean plate. There we go. Now, you can use a liner brush for this, or you can stick with a little flat brush if you want. It is up to you. I'm gonna pick up some white. Okay. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start filling in his beard. So I'm using my liner brush up and down on the chisel edge. And I'm pulling in these little strokes it's okay if your gray is not dry. That'll give you a little bit more dimension. If it is dry, that's fine too. We're not covering up. I'm gonna get up here close to the edge. Yeah. We don't wanna cover up at all. But we're just adding in here. We want his beard to have some texture. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're pulling out these hairs down past our pant leg. We're following the shape of his beard just put a little bit of line up in there and we're just pulling in you want your brush to be nice and thin like that you want it to stand up on the chisel edge and we're just pulling down and filling in right across the whole thing little short strokes maybe I can get two or three strokes and then I'll go back and I'll pick up more paint. And every time I pick up paint, I'm fixing my brush. So my brush doesn't have hairs boinging out everywhere. I want it to look nice. No bed head for our brush. And I'm gonna come back in here and pull in. And we want our hairs to go with the shape of the beard. So I'm just little little strokes until we get the coverage that we want and I think that's fine you might want yours more I think that's fine I have hairs overlapping down here on his pant legs a little bit on his arms and there we go see that right in there just pulled it down a little bit And then I'm going to pick up a tiny, tiny bit of this brown. Tiny bit. I'm going to mix it up. If you have tan, that's fine. I think tan is on the list. And we're going to fill in his nose. Ooh. Like I said, if you have some tan, now would be the time to use it for his nose. If not, just add a little bit of brown to your white and fill in his nose. Okay. I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna give it a little squeeze in my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up some black and we're gonna fill in his shoes and his hands. Ooh. 
I don't know if you guys saw this. The other day, um, we went to my husband's, my husband's good friend had a birthday. He turned 60. So we're going to go to the liquor store. He wants to get his friend a bottle of something. I don't know what, because I'm not really big on that. And then he wants to go to another store. He wants to get him something else. I'm like, well, what do you want to get him? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. Something, maybe a mug, maybe something funny. I don't know. He's 60. I just wanted to get him a little something funny about turning 60 or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, what? So we're in the store. And I'm like, wait a second, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to get him a little gag gift or something, you know, because he's turning 60. I wanted to get him a little something. I'm like, too bad. We don't know someone who could have made you something like that. Hello, me. I make mugs. I make um, water tumblers. I make t-shirts. I paint, obviously. I'm like, I have supplies. I could. He's like, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. I was like, you got to be kidding me. That's too funny. Oh. Anyway. He cracks me up sometimes. So. Back to painting. I'm just coming in here and I'm filling in his little mitts. And his feet with a little bit of black. It's almost as if his hands, the top of his hands, are like the top of a heart. I mean, if you end up just making big round blobs for his hands, it's fine. Don't fret. But if you can manage keeping that little indent in there so it looks like he's got a thumb and a mitten, that'll be good. Oh, I keep cutting out and freezing. I don't know, is anybody else having me cutting out and freezing? I don't know if it's on my end or your end, Pamela. Pamela is one of my favorite names. And anyone that I know whose name is Pamela, I actually call them Pamela. So I don't know if you go by Pamela or Pam, but I just love the name Pamela. Always have, since I was a child. I had an aunt. Okay, it's, a, it's good for Melanie. I had an aunt who was named Pamela. Actually, she wasn't really an aunt. She was my cousin's wife, but my cousin was much older than me. Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to a brown. Still with this brush. If you want to use a liner, just, you know what? Let's use a liner brush because I'm going to show you guys. Pamela, she isn't for me, so you may want to. Okay. You may want to go out and come back in, Pamela, or refresh your screen or something. Okay. Okay. I'm going back to my brown. And when I use a liner brush, I like to give it a little bit of a twirl. Okay. We want the ends of our liner brush to be nice and thin, almost like a pencil. Now, I can see where my line was. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put the rope over the branch there. And this one I can't see. I think it's here. I'm going to put the rope over the branch here. You want to make that like a little bit tiny backwards C. And then I'm just going to come in here. If you need to have a ruler, a straight edge, if you need to pencil this in first, that's totally fine. I'm just making these little short strokes. Um, you can use pencil, you can use chalk. It's totally up to you. And I'm just using these little, little tiny strokes. So my rope lines up, okay? Then we have this one on this side. Again, liner brush, light, light, strokes. Down, down, down. It's a rope, so it does not have to be perfect. And you want it to go into the swing a little bit, okay? Nothing has to be perfect about this because we're gonna pick up some white and now we're gonna come over here, we're gonna add a little bit of white and a little bit of white. And 
we're going to add a little bit of white, but now we're gonna make our rope look like it's braided by adding these little, it's hard to show. So we're going on one side and the other. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. See, I have my pinky here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white, tiny bit, and I'm going like a backward C and a frontward C down the whole rope. Now, if you were like, I'm not doing that, that's crazy. It's fine, you don't have to do it. Leave your brown, it's a rope, and you're okay. If you wanna add these little details with the white, by adding these little crossovers, it's like a little bit of a C, a comma, apostrophe, whatever, as you work your way down. Some of them are white, some of them are tan, some of them pick up the brown, some of them not so much. It's up to you. There's no art police. The art police aren't gonna come to your door and be like, that's not how you paint a rope, okay? So I'm just adding a little bit of white. This is even something that you can go back and do if you're trying to paint along tonight. You can go back and do it at another time. It's totally fine. It's not something that has to be done right away, okay? And literally, I'm just picking up on the tab, the tab, the very tip of my brush, and I'm doing a little bit crisscross, applesauce, working my way down the rope, okay? Then I'm gonna pick up some brown and some white and we wanna add a few wispies coming out the bottom, cause that's where our rope is tied to our swing, okay? Okay, wash the brush. I'm gonna go back into, I'm putting my, some dark green. And then, uh, I don't want that one. I'm gonna use a little bit of the light green I had out before, and I'm gonna put out my yellow too. I'm going to show you with the liner brush and I'll show you with the flat brush as well. We're going to add some grasses to the bottom and we're going to add the stems for our um, daisies. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to pick up a little bit of the dark green and I can see my circle in here for my daisy and I'm going to just come in here and I'm going to add a thick stem for one daisy. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add a thick stem for the other daisy. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add a thick stem for this other daisy. Okay. Then I'm going to stay with the dark green. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the light green and I'm gonna start, I want more dark. I'm gonna start adding in some grasses. Now a liner brush doesn't hold a lot of paint, so maybe you'll get like two or three strokes out of it. And I'm flicking up I'm not using my pointer finger and I'm just coming in here and I'm pulling in little tiny strokes and they flip up at the end so they're a little thinner at the end and I'm just working my way across the whole bottom. Sometimes I'll pick up some of the light green. Sometimes I'll just pick up some of the dark green. You want them to crisscross each other 
Almost missed you. It is supper time here. Hello, Carol. You can't miss me. I'll be back on the replay. What'd you have for dinner, Carol? Um, so I'm just flicking in these little light, light grasses. If you go a little bit over the bench, uh, the bench, the swing, that's okay. You want them to crisscross. You don't want to make soldiers. You're not pulling up straight. Nope, you're curling out to the right. You're curling out to the left as you pull up. Sometimes I go back in there and I pick up the light one. And so we're getting different variations of our greens and our grasses. And we're just filling in along the bottom. And again, you could put as many or as few as you want. If you want to leave, you want it to be minimalist and just leave in your daisies or maybe add in a couple more daisies and leave out the grasses, totally okay. Pinto beans, cornbread, fresh tomato and sliced onion. Oh my God, that sounds so yummy, Carol. That sounds so yummy. I had um, turkey meatball with brown rice and you know what I didn't have? You know what I had? I had um, pickled red onion. Yum. Have anybody else? What did anybody else eat dinner yet? Anybody else? What they have for dinner? Okay. I just want to add a couple of yellow ones down here. I like how the yellow looks. It makes it pop a little bit. And I'm just going to come in here and sporadically add in a few yellows. Not too many. Some of them are more yellow, but as they pick up the green, they become less yellow. There we go. Okay. Washing my brush again. Mm. I'm gonna go to, oops, where'd that brush go? My um, little flat brush again. I'm gonna do our leaves. Okay. I'm getting the dark paint. I'm picking up a little bit of the light paint. And when we're doing these leaves, I'm just going to paint in these little football shapes. Okay? My hubby is good old country boy. He'd head to your house. We had salad. Oh, yum. Yum, yum, yum. We eat salad plenty here, too. Okay. I love cornbread though. I love beans. Pinto beans are not my favorite. I do like black beans, um, but I could eat beans. Pretty much, wait, I, you guys need to see my face for this. Y'all, there are not too many things I don't eat. If I told you the few things, you'd be like, yeah, who would eat that anyway? There are literally not too many things I don't eat. Anyway, there are plenty of things I eat that I can't get here in New York. Like grits. You can't just go out and have, you know, biscuits and gravy or grits wherever you feel like it in New York. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, I think I want another leaf up here. I don't, no, not up there. Maybe here. I'll show you how we'll fix that because now it's just like hanging out, right? So. I got my leaf in there. Okay. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this yellow and blend it in to one side of the leaf. Preferably the top because that's where we want the light to be. That's what we're saying that the top of the leaf is a little bit brighter because that's where the light is shining. I don't like to get my beginners all hung up in that. I, I explain it if you care, that's fine. But you don't have to get all hung up in that because it's strawberry. <gasps> oh. Yum, yum, yum. Strawberry, strawberry season, shrimp and grits. Oh, Melanie, I love shrimp and grits. Melanie, are you talking about shrimp and grits or did you have shrimp and grits? Remember when we had shrimp and grits in Savannah? 
Then I made them a couple weeks ago from for us. They were so good. Anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, it's not, what's it, almost May? It is not, um, talking. It is not um, strawberry season here for another six weeks about. I grew up right next to a strawberry farm. We used to go and pick them all the time, all the time. So you guys, I do live in New York and some people, some people think New York is like a giant metropolis, but where I live in New York, I do not live in New York City. Upstate New York is pretty rural and I live on Long Island. Long Island is very rural. Well, parts of it. The part where I live is pretty rural. Okay. So we have that leaf hanging out there. We don't want that. So I'm going to come in here. I picked up a little bit of brown. Again, I'm going to trace down my tree branch. And then I'm going to veer off and come to my leaf. Because we don't want any harsh um, turns there. All right? I have four leaves now. I really should have three or five, but I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to get all jammed up about that. Okay. All right. Who's ready for some flowers? Okay. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. Uh, that one's there. This one's up here. And then this one's up here. We don't put our flower centers right smack on top of our stems. And I'll show you why. Oops. And those are just placeholders for now. You don't have to fret over your yellow centers. That's just to hold the place for our flower. Okay. So I'm going to get some fresh white. Again, on my little half inch, my little uh, quarter inch brush. And this one over here is almost like a half a daisy. So I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to draw in these big loops. Now, if you traced your whole daisy and you're painting inside the loops, that is fine. If you didn't trace them and you're going to come in here and just paint them on like me, then that's what we do. We just put in these big loops and then I come back and I fill them in with the white. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one down here is a full daisy. So again, we're going to just start adding in our big loops. Again, if you were more comfortable and you traced in your whole daisy, and now you just have to fill them in, that's good too. I'm just using my brush, and I'm painting in these little loops and then I'm going to fill them in. I can't even see the stem for this one anymore but that's okay it's in the grasses that's fine okay and now I'm going to do the same thing over here I'm going to show you guys a different way over here so I'm using my little flat brush right I'm going to come up here I'm going to put my brush down I'm going to make a little bit of pressure And I'm going to pull in to the center and then lift up. Come to the next one. I'm going to put my brush down. I'm going to push into it, add some pressure, pull it into the center. And as I get close to the center, I'm pulling up and away. Okay. And I'm just going to go around. 
the whole flower center like that. And I'm turning my board so you can see. Applying a lot of pressure, pushing towards the center, and then I'm lifting up. And as you lift up, the brush starts to go back on itself and retract and it gets narrower as you get to the center. And there we go. Oop, missed one. Now we have our three flowers there. And I'm gonna wash that brush and go back to my little liner brush. Because this flower up here, I traced in so it wouldn't be in our way with our hat. So now I'm just using my little liner brush and I'm filling the whole thing in. And again, if you got some blue on your daisy at the beginning, and I told you not to worry about it, this is why you didn't have to worry about it, because then when we go back, we fix it. So now we have his hat, we have our daisies. Okay, I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm going back to my dark green. Again, if you want to take a pencil or take a piece of chalk, I'm going to do it with chalk so I show you guys. Okay, we have to do our vine. Okay? So the vine comes, it like wraps around his hat. So it scooches out here, it comes across, and it scooches out there. Okay? Then it comes across here, goes up under the flower it scooches out back down to the tip of the hat comes out the other side and curls up okay starts here on the outside scooches across wraps around as this little part that wraps in there and then comes back out, goes down under the hat, and up. Don't worry if after you paint it on, you can still see the chalk. Because once your painting is completely dry, you can go back with a wet paper towel and get off the chalk marks. If you're brave and you just go for it, that's fine too. And then we come out. And we go up. Okay. Now, with my dirty brush, again, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the light. And we're going to add the same kind of... Oh, need more dark. Picked up too much light. The same little leaves except with this brush that we added to our tree branch I'm just put it going in here and I'm just putting in simple little shapes of a leaf And again, I'm going to pick up some of the yellow and lighten them up with just a little bit of the yellow. Thanks, Deb.
All right. You guys, we're winding down. Now we're going to start adding all our little details. And this is when you're going to be like, oh, how did that happen? Okay. So the first thing I want to do, going back to my little brush, I'm going to pick up some yellow. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to redo my flower centers. Make them a little bigger. Make them oval shaped. Make them in front of the petals so the petals are on the back. Okay? Yellow tends to be a little translucent, so don't worry about it. If you can see through your yellow, we always have to use two coats on yellow. Okay. I'm going to use the back of my brush and my yellow paint, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in the center for this flower. I'm using the back of my brush to draw a circle. That way I have more control over it. Okay? I'm going to clean off the back of my brush. Then I'm going back to my liner brush and my brown paint. And I'm going to come in here and I want to darken up the bottom parts of my daisies. And I'm just doing that by taking my liner brush with the dark brown paint and tapping in to the bottoms. My yellow's okay. If yours is too, too wet, you might want to wait on this part, but mine's working. This part on the bottom, so we have a little bit of a shadow, 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 okay? Underneath there. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to go back to my white. And now I'm going to add in a little bit of white highlight. To all my centers okay and then a few just a few 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 little black ones just a couple and then in here too Oh, one thing we forgot to do when I had out my other brush. I forgot my bumblebee. So when we were doing our middles, what size? It's an 11 by 14, Carol. When we were doing the middles, um, for our daisies, we could have come in here and painted in our bumblebee. Now our bumblebee, in case you didn't notice, is the shape of a leaf. Okay? So, that's all I'm going to do there. And I'm going to get out a little bit, just a dab, of red paint. Oh, my red's not working. That red is clogged. I'm going to have to unclog that. Let me get some different red paint. That's it. You don't really need much at all. And I'm going to use my liner brush. Oh, it's a little drippy. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm just going to base coat in my ladybug and that's it this is simple 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 little ladybug it is a half circle and that is it okay so we have the body of our bumblebee we have the body of our ladybug we did our vine we did the base coat to our leaves okay Okay, 
I'm gonna go to my, I'm trying to think the best order to do this in now. We have to wait for that to dry, we have to wait for that to dry. Let's go to our white. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on my liner brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of highlight on the swing, okay? That's it, couple of, couple of little lines. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight to the bottom of his shoes. That's it. Same thing to his little gloved hands. I'm just following the shape, little gloved hands. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of a white highlight to the outside of his hat. I'm gonna pick up some of this brown on my dirty brush and I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna scrub in a little bit more brown, a little bit of a shadow in here. So it just looks a little bit darker like it's casting a shadow where he's sitting. Okay. Back to my white. I'm going to add a white highlight to every one of my leaves. I'm going to add a little bit of white highlight to the branches. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight, almost like a apostrophe, to his nose. Can you see that right there? Yep. And now I think we've given our bee and our ladybug time to dry. I'm going to clean my brush and go back to my black. I love painting bees, you guys. Bees are like my almost, almost the most fun thing I think to paint. So the first thing we're gonna do is you can use a brush, you can use the back of a bigger brush. I like to use the back of a brush. If you have a small brush and you trust yourself, you can do it with a brush. This is a big brush, so it's got a big end. I'm gonna come over here on my black. I'm gonna do the same thing we did with um, what else did we make? Oh, the circle of our daisy with a brush. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna paint in with the back of our brush, the bumblebee's head. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that off. Don't need this anymore, put it back in the water. Okay. Then I'm gonna come over here with my liner brush with the black and you can add I'm gonna show you both ways. So you could just come in here and you can just add a stripe to your bumblebee. Make sure you curve it a little bit with his body. Or what I like to do, I like to come here and I like to make these little tiny strokes and work my way across his body. It's up to you. If you just wanna do the, stri the stripe, you can. If you want to do the little baby strokes, you can. And then I take one, two for his pointer, and then fill this in. Okay? So if you want to do it, just do these three stripes and then make a pointer and fill in the end, you can. Or you can do the little lines like I did there just so they match, I'm gonna come back up in here and do these little lines. Okay, okay. Then again, I'm gonna take the back of my brush and we wanna add a head for our ladybug. 
wipe that off. Oh, I didn't have to wipe it off. Back of the brush. I'm going to add one, two, three dots. I have a little bit of black on my brush. And I'm going to add his little tiny feet on the branch. And then I'm going to give him antenna. And when we do antenna, we do a little bit of a dot. And then we pull. The same thing for the bumblebee. I'm going to add a little bit of a dot and then a pull. I'm going to add a little bit of a dot and then I'm going to pull. Okay. I'm going to come back to this brush. When we do our bumblebee wings, it almost looks like a side heart. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to paint in a heart. See that? And then I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to turn my canvas all the way around. Get some more fresh white. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to paint in another heart. Again, if you need your chalk or a pencil, or if you outlined, traced your entire B, that's fine. Then you just want to color it in. Now we have our bumblebee wings. And now I'm just gonna go back with my black. Now this is, you might wanna leave your wings. This you have to be very, very light handed on. Sometimes I'm not. You wanna pick up a little bit of black. And you wanna come in here and you wanna add in the little veins on the wings. The veins on the wings almost look like the veins on leaves. Right? Okay. I want to go back to my totally dark paint now. And I want to do the same thing on my leaves here. So I'm going to pull in a stem on all my leaves right down the middle. Okay. Pick up my dark paint and do the same thing. Add in some of these veins up into my leaves. It just gives a little bit more of a detail. Okay. And then I think, I think I'm good. Last but not least, wash my brush. Pick up some fresh white and come up here and add a little white highlight to the top of our ladybug. I have a friend who comes to all my in-person paint parties and no matter what we paint, she puts a ladybug on it. And there it is. There we have it. So a little different so that was that one this was the other sample that I painted they're a little different you know can't always I can, I'm not a machine can't redo the same exact thing twice but here we go so I hope you enjoyed this class oh it's such a cutie I might add another leaf I'm having a problem with those four leaves deep breaths but it's okay Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, you can pop them into the uh, comments. And I will see you in May for um, our May's painting of the month. So cute. Thank you, Deb. This is Debbie. If this is a private group, if you paint it, share it. We're a very loving, supportive private group here. It doesn't go out to everyone. So I'd love to see it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Love you guys. Bye.